What's up, everybody? My name is Lehua, and welcome to the Superfina channel. I am a Hawaii variety content creator, host of podcasts across worlds, and I stream on twitch.tv slash Lehua Superfina. Today, we are reviewing that time I got reincarnated as a slime. And if you like anime reviews, don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell so you can be notified on the next upload. And if you would like to support the channel, we got Patreon and channel membership. Link to those are below. We are reviewing that time I got reincarnated as a slime season 2 episode 18. The title of this episode was called The Demon Lords. And y'all, we saw some demon lords. I thought it was going to be the Walpurgis and we are going to meet the demon lords. But no, we've seen some of them before Walpurgis. Like the other episode reviews, we're going to do a recap and then point out things that were interesting. The beginning of the episode started with Rimuru sending people off for their missions. Benimaru for the Animal Kingdom, Yom Diablo for Falmouth, and everybody else who are not part of Tempest went back to their homes. Then the scene changes to Clayman talking to Middlefinger through a communication orb. Clayman is reporting that Rosania is empty. There's no one there for them to kill, for Clayman to collect his souls and such. So it's like, <laughs> and Middlefinger reports that through a peddler, he learned about what happened at Tempest with Lodor, revealing that the story that Rimuru, Gazelle, and Erold story that they made up is spreading and Clayman totally believes that he believes that the deaths over there why Falmouth failed and whatnot was because of Eldora so it's like ooh, you're gonna find out the truth at Walpurgis you're gonna know because Clayman is thinking that he can use this against rumor at Walpurgis but we know the truth mm -hmm. the scene changes again to another demon lord Frey the one with the wings she has a flashback of how she gave Malim a necklace, a pendant, which put Malim under Clayman's control. So that's how Clayman was able to make Malim into his puppet and such. She was betrayed by her friend. But it does seem like Trey has something up her sleeves because at the end of her scene, she was saying that Clayman will not be part of the world or something like that and she had like a smile and when i say smile i mean the coo 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 smile and the scene changes for the last time to a snowy area showcasing demon lord leon visiting another demon lord guy crimson guy actually asked to meet up with leon to convince leon to attend the walpurgis meeting with the demon lords because clayman was acting shady He's very suspicious that Clayman wants to have the Walpurgis. Malim was part of it, so he's wondering what's going on with Malim. And then they, he also wants them to investigate into Rimuru's Demon Lord evolution and Eldora's return. And in this meeting, we meet Eldora's sister. She is the White Ice Dragon Velzara, the Empress of Ice. In this meeting between Guy and Leon, Leon actually shares what he learned from his informant from the Empire and such. The story that Rimuru then made has spread, has spread all over. And they are pretty much retelling the story that they have came up with, which is amazing. But then Leon theorizes that the door was freed in another way, which piqued Guy's interest because if Leon's theory is true, meaning that someone broke the seal instead of Veldora's door seal being broken from the bloodbath of Falmouth and whatnot. If someone did break Veldora's seal, that means that person, monster, thing, is really powerful, which piqued Guy's interest a lot. He's like, whoa, this person must be as powerful as us. And Guy really reminds me of Malim, where if he finds someone powerful, he wants to fight them. That's the vibes I'm getting. And then Leon is actually interested in meeting up with Rimuru because you know the kids that Rimuru helped out that were summoned and then he bonded them with spirits? Well, Leon was interested in those kids and he wants to find out what's Rimuru's deal. Now to talk about the things that piqued my interest. One of them is Veldora. So in the beginning of the episode, Rimuru had to remind Veldora that he is not to show up at Walpurgis until he is summoned. Now, they keep talking about Veldora, and I'm thinking, okay, Veldora is definitely going to get summoned. And when Veldora's sister showed up, I'm thinking, okay, he's definitely going to show up. If Velzard 
finds out that Vildora is that old Perkis, she's gonna show up. So I'm really hoping that he can summon and then Vilsart is there and then they can like meet up with each other, you know, brother and sister, like dragons and dragons. Another thing that piqued my interest, speaking of dragons, is that there's actually four true dragons. I'm wondering why they say true dragon. I'm thinking it's sort of like demon lords because there's a demon lord and there's a true demon lord. Are there just regular dragons and then at one point they evolve to a true dragon? Hmm. The next thing that caught my interest was Clayman's puppet control over Meleem. Now, it's been repeated multiple times that Clayman should not overestimate his control over Meleem. And I'm like wondering, well, is Meleem going to break that control or something? Then when they showed Frey's flashback, when Clayman was going a little bit overboard beating up with Meleem because, you know, she couldn't do anything because she was under his control and whatnot, Frey warned him to stop because Meleem has a defense mechanism where once it's activated, she loses control and it's called Stampede. So she told Clayman about that because if Clayman hurts Meleem a bit too much, well, maybe not a bit, a lot, it's going to activate the Stampede. And I'm like thinking, ah, that's another thing about questioning his control over her. Is she going to break it with the Stampede? And then at the end of the flashback, when it gets to the scene with Frey, you know, reminiscing it, it's present time now. She talks about how Clayman will not be part of the world anymore. And I'm like thinking, okay, his control over Meleem is definitely not gonna last because he's using Meleem against Frey. He threatens Frey to make her work with him by saying, well, if you don't work with me, then you're gonna have to fight Meleem and you don't want that, huh? Bray does not look threatened. So that makes me think that his control over Meleem is gonna be done. The next thing I wanna talk about is Demon Lord Guy Crimson. Oh my goodness. There's just so much I wanna talk about. I feel like I can do a whole different video about him. And if you guys want that, let me know in the comments below. This guy, oh my goodness. He's just oozing sexuality. That's what I'm getting. His whole era of domain, it's an icy era. He has red hair. And I'm just wondering, how did he get there? What's his story? What's going on with him? He tried to kiss Leon. I'm like, what the? He tried to kiss Leon. And then he said he can turn into a woman. And I'm like, what is going on here? Then in my reaction video someone commented that he's a demon he has no gender so i'm thinking oh guy maybe he just wants to try it with a powerful former human because he's with belzard who's a powerful dragon maybe he just wants to get with a powerful former human maybe that's it maybe he's just really curious like i said before he really reminds me of Malim, how she's really interested in powerful people like she wants to fight them maybe guy wants to do bounce wow wow with powerful people yes i said that and when lian is on his way to meet up with guy we see all kinds of monsters there's like a whole variety of them it made me think of the Druid tempest federation rimuru has a bunch of monsters under him I'm wondering if this is how Rimuru is going to look like in the far future. And then there's these two girls dressed like maids. One has green hair, one has blue hair. They totally remind me of Chion and Shuna. I'm like thinking, okay, these people must be important because they're always close to him. They keep serving him. Reminds me of Xion and Shuna because they're doing the same thing. Like they must be super loyal to him. Another similarity he has with Rimuru, dragons. Rimuru is with Veldora and guys with Vilsard. And the dragons, they're siblings. I mean, come on now. I'm like wondering how Guy met up with Vilsard, how they became partners. Yes, Guy called her partner, okay? And my question before was, why is a red-headed guy in this snowy area? 
Well, it must be under Velzar's territory. She is an ice dragon. Guy just seems really interesting. The way he talks to Leon, like they keep the world in order. They are monitoring things. They're making sure that nothing is going too chaotic and such. Just makes me wonder how powerful he is. And the last thing I want to talk about is Leon and his goal. Apparently, Leon has had a goal this whole time. And it's related to summoning a specific person. If we remember, when we first learned about Shizu's past, when Leon summoned her, he was like disappointed it wasn't who he wanted it to be summoned. And I'm like thinking, who does he want to summon? And he's related to the whole issue with the kids being summoned in different nations and whatnot. It turns out he was going to take in those kids, but I'm like wondering, okay, when were you gonna take in those kids? I mean, those kids were going to die. I mean, yeah, you're a demon lord. You don't die. You can, you know, live for a long time. I mean, he can die, but he can live for a long time. But these kids with their, you know, magical issue thing, they weren't gonna have long to live. Thank God Rimu came in to save them, but Leon was gonna do that. And it made me wonder, okay, did Leon manipulate these nations to summon people? And uh, when these kids were summoned and then they were having their problems and such, he was going to feel bad and then he was going to take them in and save them? Or was he going to use them like he did with Shizu? I have no idea what he was planning to do, but it really seems like he was in the whole thing. And then Yuki... You know, the one that's kind of like behind Clayman and whatnot. She's a student. It seems Yuki knew about Leon's plan and used Rimuru to interfere with it. Now, Leon is interested in how Rimuru helped the kids. Like, he's interested why Rimuru interfered. They kept using the word interfered. And... I'm like wondering what Leon's going to do with Rimuru. It's like, are you guys going to talk? Rimuru hates her guts, Leon, because of Shizu. I'm just saying. I'm like really excited to see how they're going to interact with each other. Like, are they actually going to talk? Like, I hope they talk. You would think I would want them to fight, but no. I want to know more information. There's just so many clues, so many hints, so much teasing. I'm thirsty for knowledge. But yeah, I'm really excited for the next episode. I'm excited to see the other demon lords and see how this Walpurgis meeting is going to happen. And you know the opening that we saw for Sintu Part 2 where we see Rimuru, Xion, and Ranga? They totally look like they're on their way to Walpurgis. I'm so excited! I'm like, oh my goodness! Oh. Anyways, that's my review of That Time I Got Reincarnated as a Slime Season 2 Episode 18. If there's anything I missed and you want to talk about it, let me know in the comments below. Start a conversation. If you haven't seen the episode, what was your impression from this video? If you want to talk outside of YouTube, there's a Discord. Link is in the description. I also stream on twitch.tv slash Superfina. If you can watch these videos, do like to stop by the stream. Outside of YouTube and Twitch, I host podcasts across worlds where we talk about anime, manga, and other things you're interested in. If you like podcasts like that, link to the podcast is in the description. We're available on all platforms. Other than that, my name is Lihua, and this is a Superfina channel reviewing that time I got reincarnated as a slime. Season 2, episode 18. Hope you guys like this video, and I'll see you on the next one. Later! Huge thanks to my Patreons and channel members for making this video possible. If you also want to be part of the Superfina party, you can click over here or become a channel member. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And I do stream live on Twitch every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Hope to see you guys there and I will see you on the next video. This bump.